What's up everybody? Welcome back. It's your man with the very good juice. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how I made my own custom cellular router using LTE Fix and LTEHacks.com and how you can make one too. Check it out. Now, I first came across LTE Fix and LTEHacks.com a little over a year and a half ago when I first started using LTE as a solution for my home internet. I was curious about how people made their own modems and routers and use LTE as a solution for them. I even entertained the idea of ordering some stuff, but quite frankly, I was intimidated by how little I did know about LTE at the time. Even as time went on and I learned more about LTE, I was still hesitant to get something from LTE Fix or use LTE Hacks to put together my own device because I was worried about flashing firmware, putting pigtails on, whether or not I'd brick a modem, whatever that meant. In short, I was just scared to try something new. And that meant that I would spend more money to get a less powerful device just because it came in the box ready to go with its own firmware and required less effort from me. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a bunch of scraps. Well, I finally got over myself and decided I'm going to try to build my own device. And I got to tell you, it wasn't that hard. Some parts were a little challenging, but overall, I wish I would have done this a lot sooner. It would have saved me some money and I wouldn't have a few devices that are just going to collect dust as I'm never going to use them again. At LTEFix.com, you can look at all the parts and components you would need to build your own custom cellular modem slash router. Currently, unfortunately, they aren't taking any orders because their inventory is low due to COVID. But if you look on LTEHacks.com, you can see an affiliate link where you can purchase items there until LTE Fix is back up and running. Now, let me show you what I ordered and how I put it together to make my own custom router. Now the router that I ordered is the NEXQ6GO router. Now this router is very similar to the WE826 router. That's the router that the MoFi company uses. This router is similar in architecture, slightly different with the firmware, and it has a more powerful Wi-Fi range. Now both routers only have the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi range, and both routers only have 100 megabit LAN ports in the back of them. So they're not gigabit routers, they're not the higher end routers, but it is suitable for my needs and it was pretty much what they had left when I ordered. Now the router may be eh, but I ordered a very powerful modem. I ordered the Quectel, Quactel, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, EM20G modem. This is a category 20 modem. It has up to seven times carrier aggregation, meaning it can connect up to seven different bands at one time to improve your speed. And it has four by four MIMO, meaning it uses four antennas versus the two used by the category six in the MoFi 4500. Now, since this modem is an M2 type modem, I had to order a mini PCIe to M2 adapter for the router because the router only has a mini PCIe modem slot. I had to order four MH4 to SMA pigtails in order to be able to attach antennas to this motor. I upgraded to four Cisco antennas to replace the stick antennas that come with the router. In order to do that, I needed a TNC female to SMA male adapter. I also ordered four flat panel ADBI antennas off of Amazon just in case the Cisco antennas didn't work out. An upgraded 12 volt power supply as suggested by LTE Fix for the type of modem that I'm using with this router. Everything came nicely packaged with bubble wrap protecting all of the components that I needed for my custom build. My Cisco antennas, power adapter, my modem and my mini PCIe to M2 adapter. It's my modem. Packing list, make sure I get all the stuff I ordered, and my router. And Jim at LTE Fix was even nice enough to send me an extra shell to practice drilling the extra holes. And I'm glad he did, because the first drill I used, I tore that sucker up. In a nutshell, what I learned is that you don't need a powerful drill to make holes or to enlarge holes in this shell. A regular 12 volt drill will do the job just fine. 
You paying attention? No. <laughs> Sorry, man. If you have a MoFi and ever wondered what it looked like on the inside, open it up, take a look. You'll see the Sierra Wireless modem plugged into the modem slot, and you'll probably notice the silicone covering the pigtail connections, I guess, to secure them. Now this is what my router looks like on the inside. You notice there's nothing plugged into the modem slot. So we're gonna take our mini PCIe to M2 adapter and we're gonna plug that in. Then we're gonna secure it to the router by placing screws on either corner to secure it down. Once we have it secured, we're gonna take our modem and plug it into the modem slot that's on the adapter card. The same way it plugs into the slot for the router, Plug it in at an angle. Make sure we push it all the way in. Okay, once it's in, this gets secured with a single screw that attaches the modem to the adapter. You may notice that my modem already has the pigtails attached to it. I tried to record this process for you guys to put it in this video, but it was so frustrating that I just gave up recording and concentrated on putting the pigtails on. This was very difficult, but as you can see, I got it done. All I can tell you is to have a whole bunch of patience, a magnifying glass, and be gentle. Once the pigtails are lined up with the modem ports, they will snap in without much force. This particular modem had four pigtails to attach. Depending on which modem you get, you may only have two. This was definitely the most challenging part for me. The only way I could describe it is like... Oh, come on. But once I got them attached, it was like... Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Now bring it down hard. Put it together. With everything connected, now all that's left to do is to take the SMA side of the pigtails and put them through the holes in the shell and secure them to the shell. Remember, I had to drill two extra holes because I'm using four LTE antennas and I needed two holes for my Wi-Fi antennas as well. One quick word of advice. If you're drilling any extra holes, if you get this router or whichever router configuration you get, make sure you take measurements first and make sure that the pigtails line up good because I did. And two of my LED lights are going to have to be bent a little bit so I can close this up, which is no big deal to me. But if you're a stickler for perfection, that may bother you. So don't be like me. Be a little bit more careful when you drill your holes, take some measurements. So all of your LED lights will show once you close it up and power it up, unlike mine. But with that being said, it's time to close this up and check out our finished product. This one, of course, is with the Cisco antennas and the TNC adapters that I bought from LTE Fix. And this one is with the antennas that I got off of Amazon. Same antennas that the MoFi uses, except they're just configured a different way. So there you have it. I built my own device. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Please let me know what you think in the comments or leave questions if you have any. And stay tuned for part two, where I'll be talking about the firmware and the performance. And of course, I'm going to do speed tests. You know I love to do speed tests. So stay tuned. More to come. Thanks for watching and have a good one. I'm here to help. Thank you, you've been helpful.